<laughs> the pH, yeah, that's right. I mean, it's true. I mean, if some some of the discussion posts were like really nice, but I mean, it's hard to like follow through the conversation. Um, yeah, I, I put it there in the chat. I, I okay, I don't. Uh, I just like online. We're talking is better, exactly. And they do not want to start a new chapter for the Yeah, I already put it in the chat if you want to read it. But beside that, we're ready to roll. Awesome. All right. Yeah, yeah. let me just say uh, a couple things real quick off the bat. Uh, yeah, this is the last meeting of the fall semester. Um, next Tuesday, we'll be in the winter semester. And I'm not sure who is taking winter semester classes. I'm teaching at least one, possibly two. We'll see. So um, just because it's the end of the fall semester doesn't mean the philosophy club will be ceasing their weekly meetings. Uh, we will be continuing on every Tuesday. So yeah, join us next week. Um, same back time, same back channel, we'll be here. Um, also big shout out to, uh, to those people who came to the film series installment last Wednesday, uh, The Science of Love. It was um, a really interesting documentary and uh, an extremely interesting conversation. I really appreciated the post film discussion. Um, Yes, yeah, so if y'all want to check out what we talked about, you can find the video up there in our uh, in the chat from last Wednesday. And uh, yeah, I, I mean, I guess that's about it. Thank y'all for coming. I know it is finals week. The semester technically closes in a couple of days, so I mean, you found time to be here. Really much, very much appreciate that. Um, also, again, continue to check us out for updates over the winter break on uh, on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook at RLC philosophy, oh, excuse me, at DC philosophy, pardon me. Um, yeah, and we'll, we'll be posting our weekly topics there as usual and our, you know, our Friday philosophy oh, memes, wait, all that good stuff. And, uh, yeah. That brings, us, that brings us to um, today's topic real quickly. So, so traditionally philosophy club would have a, a potluck at the end of uh, the semester, usually during finals week. So, it would be kind of an informal meeting, as, as Fernando was saying at the top. Um, people coming and sort of just, you know, enjoying themselves, leisurely kind of talking about whatever philosophical topic comes up. Of course, we can't do that this semester uh, due to these extenuating circumstances. So, uh, yeah, the officers and I thought it might be a good idea to talk about, you know, get a little meta, talk about what the philosophy club is supposed to be. Now, some of y'all have been here with us, you know, every single meeting. Um, which has been fantastic. And, and, you know, some of y'all, the officers, have been to the Philosophy Club oh, in previous years. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, wait, Mansi, there is an echo. I know who, from who is coming, so give me a second. That part of what you're saying is being missed. Um, there you go. Sorry, Justine, I'm going to have to mute you for a moment. Okay, that's it. She's muted. You can continue. I guess the question is this, you know, and I, I'm always interested in, in the students who come to Philosophy Club for the first time. What, what did you think this was? And what's more, were your expectations met? Were they exceeded? Were they not met? Uh, and that will bring us, of course, to a, a, I think a larger question. What is the role of the Philosophy Club in, in the greater community, both the academic community as well as sort of the in this case, the, the DFW community. I mean, we're not the only philosophy club in town. Uh, there, there are a few different ones at various colleges and universities, but it's like, what, what purpose do they serve? Uh, what is the impact that maybe they're intended to make from your perspective on the individual, on the students, on your understanding of the world uh, in, in a more personal manner, not just you know academically? How is a philosophy club different from a class? Should it be any different from a class? And if so, why? So things like this. Oh, my ride's here. <laughs> okay, I see already some of you know the deal. And I'm going to um, just rephrase it for those who don't. If you want to participate, feel free to uh, write an exclamation mark on the chat so we know exactly which order to follow. We already have a couple, but don't be shy. And we already know that Jennifer will drop bombs, but through text because she cannot speak. And yeah, um, if that is being <clears throat> said, I don't know if Mansi has something more to say, but Marcus will be next. Yeah, I'll proceed. Yeah. Um, well, you know, I just want to, oh, Philosophy Club has been a part of it for like, damn, I don't even know, like three, three years now, I think, Mansi or something like that, two or three years. 
um, I believe it was like a ago when I had my first meeting and it was from, um, I had initially just taken an intro to philosophy class and, um, you know, she had talked about, you know, the extra credit and I was like, all right, you know, I'm digging the class. Let me go to this meeting, see what's up. And if I thought the class was like feeding, you know, my soul, you know, the, the, the meetings just blew that out of the water. It's, it's a lot the communication between people more on that. Um, it should be taught in, uh, was it, uh, primary and secondary school? Is that how you call it? Was it elementary school and middle school? I think it should be a required class as far as, um, you know, students taking it and I don't, I don't know. Okay. Maybe not elementary school, but middle and high school for sure. Okay. It should be required in my opinion, because the benefits one gets when you question everything in yourself is much better than the benefit, the benefits you get from doing like your multiplications table. You know what I'm saying? Like there's, there's, there's odds that outweigh the other. Um, and I think that's, it's everyone's almost duty as a human to do that thing where you question everything about yourself and everything around you, everything that you've known, everything that was taught to you because it was taught to you. You didn't find it, you know, it was put before you on a plate. And I think philosophy club kind of lets you separate that plate and go, is this what I want to eat though? Do I like those green beans? No, I'm gonna go for the mashed potatoes. That type of attitude. You 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 start to discover that you know you you can almost you can change everything about yourself, which which I don't think any other thing really does better than philosophy. It really the whole purpose and you know w within meetings, uh, classes, interactions between philosophers is to challenge what you already know and challenge it amongst your peers um, in the hopes of discovering something that you didn't think you could have known yesterday by yourself, you know, only through communal action and discourse, um, sometimes aggressive discourse, sometimes, you know, quite, you know, sedated, uh, depends on the attitude, <laughs> uh, but okay. uh, I like them both, you know, I do, <laughs> but I think that's the role, and I think that's that's what I have to put it on. And I think that ah, I just can't say enough good things about I think everyone could benefit, especially young adults, primarily in a world where they grow up, where they don't know shit. They're looking around like, what do I do with my life in a world that's so confusing more and more every day? You know, we, we, we don't know what to do. We don't know what corner to turn, don't know who to trust, especially these days, don't know what to believe. You know, so you really kind of have to believe yourself then at that point. So if you really just believe in yourself, you know, you got to look for yourself. And I think philosophy does the best job of that. So I'll, uh, yeah, I'll, right. shut, I'll shut up now. I'll let Marcus, me... Marcus, I have a question oh. for you. <laughs> yeah, what's, um, up? what's the question? Have you been going to the minutes lately? <laughs> See, like you have a hey, lot man. to like, uh, train. You have a lot to discharge. It's fine. <laughs> I know. Okay. Your boy been busy. All right. Look, I was at last week's, wasn't I? Okay. Yeah, you were. You were. I'm not complaining. Work, it's just fun. Like, work, man, it's, it is seems like you have a lot to say. <laughs> I've been out like it is so some days. Four. All right. So, but yes, I still love you guys. Don't worry. Even if I'm not here every every week. Okay. We know. We love you too. Anyway. Um, and now, Robbie Rowe, you are next. Ravi. Thank you. Um, so, I mean, I've always been interested in extracurriculars, but I just didn't feel like, you know, I had the time uh, until COVID, right? <laughs> and now all of a sudden, all the places I needed to drive to and, you know, do things just kind of disappeared. And, you know, when I was looking for extracurriculars, um, sorry, could I just close my window? I think there's a lot of background noise coming from there. Just I mean, we can hear it, but yeah. it's not that disturbing. So it is fine. OK, all right. Um, so, yeah, the impact of the philosophy club of choosing extracurriculars and choosing this as my main one. Um, it's done a lot to open my mind. I think initially what I thought of philosophy, I think as a teenager, I read some argument about everything being water and everything being fire. And then two philosophers were fighting about this. And I was incredibly frustrated because I was like, there's no answer, right? 
And um, as a person who generally uh, leans more on the math science, that's incredibly, that was incredibly frustrating for me. Um, but joining the philosophy club, I then came home to the fact that there probably isn't a black and white answer for <laughs> a lot of things. And it's more intelligent to realize that and be at home in that and realize what the nuances are surrounding the issues we deal with every day and to think more deeply. So I think I am a, a deeper thinker after all, all of this. Uh, like uh, Marcus was saying, I do question everything now. Like literally somebody, someone, someone would say something and I'm like, I, I don't know, even things that from, you know, back in the day, I just always accepted as fact, always accepted as, oh, this is the way things are. This is the way I think. This is what I believe. It's taught me to <laughs> question everything. Why do I believe that? Is it true? Does this thing actually exist? Why, why are you saying what you're saying? You know, um, it's taught me to question everything um, and think more deeply and even find out what the roots are of you know some some political stances that we have things that we just take as fact and then finally and i don't know if anyone remembers but my first two meetings uh, at the philosophy club i could not speak <laughs> I was super nervous, like, what do I say? And I'll write down everything and literally read down what I've written because I just felt like I'm gonna look like such a fool. <laughs> but it's truly grown my confidence. You know, I even realize when I'm speaking with other people that I'm able to articulate what I want to say better. I even got to present at the undergraduate philosophy conference, me, me. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, it's, it's been amazing and I do plan to continue on. Um, so I did realize that a lot of uh, the celebrated mathematicians were also philosophers. So I'm at home. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's been the impact of the philosophy club on me. I mean, I'm gonna clip the, this area. It's gonna be a straight out to the Instagram, like just like that. It doesn't need any modification. <laughs> <laughs> word by word, very Thank moving you. words. Um, and I'm so happy that you found that place in in this uh, in this club uh, because I do remember uh, that you were kind of like oh, uh, you were like just typing. Yeah. You yeah, were like yeah. com competing with Jennifer who typed the most and like, okay, <laughs> sure. Let's, let's just read what Ravi has to say. Now you're just like going out of your mind, like poop, 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 yes. poop, yes. <laughs> bones. That is so good to see. Um, I mean, in, in my case, uh, since I'm next, I, I, I didn't came to the philosophy club looking for extra credit. I wasn't even a study, uh, a student in uh, philosophy. Um, I always, in my country, I always love philosophy to talk about it, but I actually never study it. And by then I was just trying to have a different uh, venue where I can like um, experience something different. I, I just I just needed it. And I remember that I was walking past by one of the, of the rooms and I saw that there was like the, the meeting was going on and I just kind of like went in without knowing exactly what it is. I just wanted to see what, what was it. And I saw that it was philosophy and they started like talking I don't remember what was the topic. That's so sad. Um, but it, it did feel good. Um, it felt like um, there was a place for me where I can safely explore my ideas. Uh, I tend to be very, uh, I don't overthink, but I do like to like be very creative minded. So I like to see, like if I see a box, believe me, I will look at that box and see how many things I can laugh about it and how, how can I do something with it. Like, I don't necessarily do something with the box, but I imagine it a lot. And for me, Philosophy Club was that way for to put this creativity into action uh, where I can start like assessing how my thoughts are, um, whether if they are realistic or maybe they are too imaginary. So it, it did help in the sense also as Raviro, um, it grew or boost my confidence in speaking, even though I'm not shy. Um, I started to realize that at the very least I, I do have some connections happening in my mind. It's not like just like bumbling right there, like to, like three cockroaches, just like tung, 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 you know, so it's kind of like, okay, so it, uh, seemingly what I say does have some sense. 
um, and it does make me consider things that I normally wouldn't. Uh, even sometimes when I hear some comments from me, it's like, wow, no, that's that's too far off. But then I have to really stop thinking, like, okay, if I think we're far off, why? And I start like really trying to look into the the connection that the person is doing, and I start like expanding my knowledge of the of my surroundings. I start like learning more of um, of different societies and cultures. And uh, at the end of the day, whenever I'm talking to someone, I'm more able to like really understand something. You know, like I, I I'm more propensed to like, for example, not disregard ideas just because they seem un, un, unfallible. It's like, okay, th there is something in it. And if we can like go and connect with each other just through this uh, idea, then by all means, let's do it. So it, it did, um, well, plus the friends that, that I have made. Yes, uh, my grandmother is having a, a birthday. So that's what they're doing. Um, so yes, it did create a, a very great sense of community also for me where I can like have for example, Marcus and the Devs, that we started like, seeing that series. Uh, it's it just, it's, it's just really a great way for me to get in touch with people who really care of what's going on out there. So yeah, and I will now, for the moment, give my floor to Yusha. Thanks, uh, thanks for that. Uh, first, happy birthday to your grandma, I'm Ferdinando, and um, I'm sorry I'm late, I just had a meeting with a client, but I did hear most of the conversation and I'm so happy that uh, more more and more people are are feeling the, the environment that the officers and the advisors are trying to create, that it's a very safe place to to kind of open up and, and reach into your own academic um, excellence because just, just today over at breakfast, uh, my sister, I hope she's not here. Uh, Isra and I were, were having a conversation and I was explaining to her what uh, the term Dasein means. Um, and it was it was difficult, but we, we got to the bottom of it through having a conversation. And I think this is what um, a, a club, especially as a philosophy club, allows the students and it gives them the opportunity to express themselves in a way um, not just expressing themselves, but um, expressing themselves to deliver a message, to to give an expression with a purpose and with a meaning. And I th this we've tried to create, and hopefully the officers that are going to follow us, uh, they'll maintain it. So more and more people can can learn from our experiences. They can learn from what we've been through without having to reinvent the wheel, and. Uh, I think this. When was the first time I was officially? I don't. I don't even remember when was the first first meeting I had with the philosophy club. It's been it's been a a while. And since then, I mean, I've been on and off when we were on campus. But I think COVID. I do have to thank COVID nineteen because uh, my involvement with with especially the philosophy club has skyrocketed. I mean, I I didn't I did not go to any meetings before uh, when we were on campus because I was taking four six to seven classes each semester to kind of finish my studies quicker, and which did not give me enough time to attend any meetings. And on top of that, I have I still have a full time job. Uh, which I'm thankful for, but this um, this really allowed me to open up and kind of face my my fears. And I don't know if any of you know, but I'm I am a severely introverted person. And yes, uh, you might think that I might be lying, but you can ask Professor Manzi about my participation back when I first joined his class and today. So. Uh, it's all thanks to Professor Manzi and the Philosophy Club that, that was, I was able to open up. I was able to make awesome friends like Ferdinando, Professor Manzi, Orlando, Marcus. Uh, unfortunately, Fortuna is not here, but I would count her uh, as well. And it's it's just been amazing. Like, I hope we come up with like an alumni chapter of the Dallas College Philosophy Club so I can maintain 
hopefully keep up with uh, with joining the meetings and still participating and, and putting in my two cents about about the topic. But yeah, I, I wish I had something something kind of um, something to say where I would suggest that it's not beneficial to have a philosophy club on campus for any college, but I, I just can't um, find anything negative to say about it. I mean, you could say that it takes up time or it challenges um, ideas like like religion, gender, freedom, uh, laws, politics and all that stuff. But that is the beauty of it, because you can challenge all these things without having to face any negative repercussions and you still get to learn about what what different people think and why it is that way. So I think, yeah, it's I, I wish I had something negative to say, but but I don't. So I'll just let Professor Menzi um, uh, take his turn. I mean, yeah, that was beautiful. I'm, it's it's touching to hear all of these sort of testimonials. I um, I mean, again, I wasn't expecting that necessarily, but yeah, I mean, everybody is raising some really great points, and and I hope they're resonating with uh, with all the others. Um, yeah, I guess I just want to circle back around to the topic um, because again, not to say that we've digressed from, it, but kind of try to galvanize all these various points being made here that again are, are beautiful. Um, you know, so we talked about people sort of coming out of their shell and into their own um, in, in this kind of forum where, as Yusha was saying, we're talking about heavy stuff, deep stuff, personal stuff. So not not the kind of thing that you would imagine would be a, a vehicle for people to come out of their uh, introverted shells. Usually that's like small talk. That's what small talk is for. But it's it's almost the opposite here. And I think that's interesting. Um, so I guess I, I, I'd ask this, you know, it seems like, or does it seem like philosophy club is a place where one can come to know oneself better through this, uh, again, this communal aspect and also again, make friends maybe specifically because of the nature of the conversation. And, and you know, unlike a, a class where you, you have to complete certain assignments, um, there's no kind of, there's no pressure of an assignment attached to it. There's no pressure to even speak. Uh, one is free to just listen and when one feels comfortable, they can come out of their shell. And so I think, yeah, all, all of these are, are testifying to the personal impact here. But but I wonder, I wonder what happens when the social aspect comes into play because it's like, well, I, I tend to think that, you know, at a place like a community college, the philosophy club is um, even more, I would say, special than at other places because I, I like I like to think that the friendships being forged and, and, and the kind of um, self-understanding or self-awareness or confidence that, that is getting uh, produced through these conversations, you then go out into this community and, and you're a different kind of person maybe than you might have been otherwise. So it's not, I don't think it stops at the personal because then you take what it is from your own personal impact that the philosophy club has, has left on you to whatever degree. And you know if that impact is in any way lasting, you, you become a, an especially, a, I think, in-depth person. I, I think that you become the kind of person who is willing to hear out other people's perspectives. It's it's a hermeneutic virtue in a way. Um, one is able to appreciate other sides of the uh, of the conversation, and also feel like one also has a voice in in these kinds of conversations. Uh, when one is able to sort of greatly specify their values and their their positions on things, um, I, I just think that allows. I think the, the entire community benefits from from those kinds of members within the community, uh, within the Dallas area or, or beyond, wherever you might go. So I, yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to draw this connection here between the personal impact and and maybe what that means for the greater community. Um, and again, not necessarily just academic, although as we've seen, uh, some some philosophy club folk went on to present at the conference, which itself I think is is a fantastic, uh, I suppose, process going from here to there. And for the record, I think I'm going to begin to introduce in the conference an alumni uh, spotlight. So I think that might be a really excellent thing as well. And in fact, I had a student officer from semesters past 
reach out to me last night and just say, hey, can I come back and hang in the philosophy club? Like, is that cool? And say, yeah, of course. It is. You're more than welcome to come. Um, I think there are people after me, so I'll, I'll cut it off there, although I could say more. But yeah, try to think about that. Like, what is it about the informal nature of the philosophy club that somehow is a benefit to the greater community in the way that it sort of benefits you uniquely? Yeah, I, I did find one thing negative. I'm sorry. Uh, I know it's your turn, Ferdinando, but one thing negative I did okay. find is is cut his mic. Uh, cut his mic. Great Professor caller. Manzi and and how um, um, long he he um, takes to deliver the message and the the pH puns, all that. I mean, just put that in one bucket and label it as big negative. But yeah, that's about it. That's yeah. a positive for me, man. I don't know what you're talking about. That's a subjective thing right there. Very subjective. Let's philosophize about Thank it. <laughs> that's, that's, that will be the topic for next week. Like, how, how, <laughs> how negative is Mansi for the philosophy club? So this is a, it's a perfect continuation. It's a theme. Um, so yeah, ah, Ravi is next to me. Okay, so I will continue. Uh, but yes, I do want to talk about uh, some of the points that Mansi uh, was addressing, because also something that I feel like it, it has um, uh, it has helped me a lot uh, since I'm become very active um, with the Philosophy Club is that uh, I've learned also how to uh, think better, um, which I, I, I know is maybe weird to say, but it did it, it did taught me how to or teach me. Sorry, it did teach me. Um, how to analyze information, how to like proper thinking in, 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 with more technical manners. Like for me, the whole thing like a utilitarian or Kantian or um, uh, how, how is that word again? Dr. Carrillo mentioned it all the time. Oh, I forgot, but it's one of the important, more fundamental elements of philosophy. Um, I, I can, I, I can, yes, I, I don't remember right now, but I will. I promise you, that's always something that happens. That's some, uh, yes, a bit, a bit, a bit of terminology or whatever that word is. Um, so like, yeah, I start to like really have uh, because before I used to just think, but I didn't have like definitions but once i have a definition and a clear way of how that affects when people's like uh, actions or decisions or how that could be interpreted as good or bad depending on how you're looking at it it does give you like tools to better assess whatever is happening in the situation so sometimes you feel like, you know what maybe this way of thinking could be very appropriate for this type of actions but it could not really help you understand other things. So you start like having a more concrete way of thinking that uh, does allow you to have uh, like a better tools or a better pool of options to understand what is happening next to you. Um, I mean, in, in one way, I do have to say that since I've been very young, I have been installed to analyze anything and doubt everything that is existence, which has been one of the most um, instrumental ways for me to fight my mother <laughs> like I, I cannot just take things because people are telling me to take them i have to really know why um but before it was just me trying to understand and throwing punches and now at the very least i know that there is a target and i know exactly like what is something that is missing in the argument and and also i'm more uh, since i keep hearing ideas that are opposite to mine I'm also get more used to be uncomfortable in a in a in a conversation and not and be comfortable being uncomfortable. I don't know if that makes sense. Like, okay, maybe this is wrong in in my opinion, but I can take it because I know that there is also some right in that opinion. So it does help me even like um, since since being in philosophy club, I'm more able to like go to like debates or go to like arguments that otherwise would have been affecting me. And understand that in front of me there is just an, another individual with a different set of ideas, and I have to like know how I can reach into his mind so we can connect together and see that yeah we may not agree on everything, but we may find some common ground so we at the end of the day live with something uh, meaningful and not like deteriorating each other if if it is possible of course. Um, but yeah, I will let then Ravi uh, continues. 
OK, thank you. Um, Professor Manzi asked about the informal setting of the philosophy club and how that can how that has helped. Um, my expectation coming in because I knew professors would be a part of it. I thought, you know, would have professors kind of like, I don't know, sitting virtually and then people with their points quite formally. But um, watching Yusha Ferdinando and then there's a third one teasing Professor Manzi was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> This is that's, that's Orlando. That's Orlando. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it just kind of broke a mental barrier for me where I realized philosophy is life. You know, it's 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 not something this big, scary thing that you have to uh, write down your points very carefully. It's in everything. It's part of every thing and every detail of what we do. So we can expect to have those conversations not only in philosophy club but even with our friends even with our family philosophy is life so i mean that seeing you know you guys tease professor manzi and just have fun with it was like oh okay i guess hey we can have fun with this we we can just be friends have a really good time and speak about really deep topics and then uh, professor manzi also asked about how the impact like on the outside when interacting with other people um i think uh i sorry i, I i'm forgetting her name but another professor during the philosophy uh, conference she mentioned um intellectual empathy and that's something that i had never heard about and it's it really got me thinking about, you know, especially uh, when we speak about p political positions and we say this is what I believe, or even simply the pandemic and what different people believe, what they think should be done, what they think should not be done. Uh, am I being empathetic when I'm listening to the next person? Or do I have my point and I'm listening for the sake of answering, not really being empathetic to their views, putting myself in their shoes and, you know, it's something that's changed my conversations. So those are the two points I wanted to add. Those were very good points. Yeah, and I'm glad that we making human Mansi is helping you be more comfortable here in, in the Pacific Club. Nice to have that, you know, <laughs> if we let him lose, he's just like a scared people away. So we have to like keep reminding him that he has to be less of a Whatever that is, it's not even a robot. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was very, thank you for sharing that. Please don't encourage them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's that's a long time lost in the past. Yeah, there is no turning back. Yeah, we need no encouragement. It's already there. It's already happening, so it's fine. And it's working as a charm, so we, we just, we just go 2.0. We're going to get more creative from now on. Um, yes, but next in line is uh, Professor Luisa Benton. I had food in my mouth. Sorry, I had to finish chewing real quick. Um, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, cool. Okay, so I think Jeff might have touched on this earlier, um, but <clears throat> I was just going to um, kind of tag onto that with um, the importance of this type of discourse, which um, I know a lot of things have been said about uh, just a place for people to share ideas and things of that nature. But I wanted to kind of put a context around it with regard to um, culture right now, which I know sometimes, you know, uh, us older folks kind of sound like dinosaurs to you younger folks, but, um, you know, there's a, a trend toward, you know, and, and it keeps, I think, getting smaller and smaller with regard to sound bites and very kind of um, piecemeal interactions, like with things like tweets and things like Facebook posts and things that tend to not be particularly in depth or substantial, um, which I realize are certainly valid forms of communication and they're meaningful, but they're just a different type of communication. And so I think that, um, I don't wanna say the now more than ever kind of thing, cause that sounds like such a cliche, but I would say that it's important, especially now um, for there to be opportunities for a kind of discourse that's not characterized by these brief little sound bites or, 
or um, stuff that's just kind of surface level to me that doesn't really get in depth that there's, there's no layers and there's no, um, there's not anything kind of robust to certain types of conversations. So I think this format, this arena, this club is a way of um, not just showing people the importance of that kind of discourse, but also um, allowing people to experience a type of communication that's far more, um, I guess I want to just use the word substantial. It's just far more substantial than what most of us probably typically engage in throughout the day, which for me, often it's like text messages, which are pretty quick or emails. And they're kind of just about something that's like practical, you know, like appointments and things of that nature. And this, there's nothing really practical, even though it's very practical, but this is highly, um, contextualizing the situation that it's very much about ideas and it's not about some practical task that we're trying to get out of the way. So my two cents. Two, three, five cents out there. 20, we, have a, a whole dollar. <laughs> we have a whole dollar out there. So oh. it is good. Uh, oh, Actually, we have, yes, you should, we have another one. I was about to say, like, we don't have anybody who wants to speak. That's so sad. I was about to just be, like, um, a dictator. You know, my fingers are, like, mini. Those who hasn't spoke, you spoke, or something like that. I need to come with a rhyme on it. So you can start, like, getting that rabbit of feeling of you, that you can speak anything. Because that's the beauty of philosophy. Philosophy is everywhere. It's in everything. You just have to know how to, like, say it. And you cannot learn if you don't talk. But yes, with that being said, you said you're next. I mean, uh, I, I just, I'm just going to chime in because I saw there wasn't anything after, after Professor Benton, and I was like, dang it, I need to step in. So yeah, I mean, it's um, so far everything that's been said. I think it's it's pretty cohesive with. Um, what this club was was meant to be and was founded on so it, it can give everyone that that feeling of like belonging and not belonging in in a, an academic sense but in a place where in the sandbox environment where you're free to do whatever you want without having to face um any negative negative effects of uh, what you just said or because i know in the past we have dealt with a lot of um, controversial topics. We've had existentialism. We've had religion. We've had freedom. We've had we've had gender. Where um, uh, Fortuna got so upset with uh, with that meeting, but you know, unfortunately, it it happens sometimes, which is perfectly fine. We're just humans, and it being out outside of that academic environment, yet you are free to to kind of engage what you've learned in your academic environment, uh, which is a classroom or any book that you might have read or anything like that. So it's, um, I guess what I'm, what I'm trying to say is that uh, being here gives a lot of us that, that sense of like after class kind of lunch table discussion kind of environment where amongst friends you can say whatever and we only mess with Professor Manzi because you know sometimes we feel like a topic might be too heavy uh, we might be discussing a lot of a lot of sensitive stuff that that people might take negatively so we as the officers kind of like go back and forth with Professor Manzi because if you took Professor Professor Manzi's class before um COVID-19 had hit we had something called a snack tax and for those of us who know what snack tax is I'm sorry that you had to go through that but you know this is just payback to um to the snack taxes all those all those years yeah okay yeah real quick uh because we are kind of running out of time, and I realized, well, the officers let me know that we never voted last week on a topic. That's kind of why we spontaneously came up with this topic. And I do want to make sure we have time to vote for next week's topic. Uh, but having said that, a couple of things. Um, you know, I guess I, I want to speak to the Philosophy Club 
kind of following up on, uh, on Louisa's point, uh, sort of from the perspective of the professor. So yeah, we, we've been hearing a lot of sort of students uh, testimonials, which is fantastic, but you know, what do the professors quote unquote get out of it? What, what is the upshot for us? And, and again, it's very much what, what, what Professor Benton was saying, which is to say that, you know, we value this kind of discourse. We, we value the, the, the kind of professor-student interaction where we can talk about these ideas Again, in, in a way that's, uh, you know, obviously respectful and safe, but also very playful. I mean, philosophy, it's, it's not about answers. It's just about questions, more questions. Nobody is posturing as though they have the answer. Um, perhaps that's what professors are paid to do in their classes. But again, this is the beauty of having a club. I mean, even the professors can be a bit, I guess, more free with their, um, their naivete or their, their wondering. Uh, it, it's it's actually very relieving, um, and, and again, you know, I, I do value the the back and forth, the playful banter. I think that's um, it humanizes not just the professors but the students. And as Ravi was saying, it humanizes philosophy. Look, I remember when I was a student, uh, and, and you know, as an undergrad student, I um, there was a philosophy club, and I thought it was so intimidating. I used to watch them from afar because they would meet where I had a, a student uh, work study thing. And I just remember being like, I can't go over to that table. Like, there's just a bunch of geniuses over there, and like, I can't fit in. Um, and and you know, fortunately, there it turns out their club was much like ours. And that's that's always been the inspiration, is that it did it all the things that I'm hearing. I experienced that when I was y'all's age, or when, when I was in y'all's position. And um, yeah, the least I could do, I feel, is kind of present an opportunity, present a forum, or you know, kind of help present it. Uh, and hope that it has the same effect. And it's really, it's really inspiring, and it's, it's, you know, reaffirming that it is kind of having that effect on on students. Um, and I hope that it continues to do so indefinitely. Uh, and getting back to this whole idea of like the the greater community, yeah, I just, again, I want to emphasize that the, I, I feel like we learn because friendship was a topic a few weeks ago. I feel like philosophy teaches us how to become friends with people who aren't necessarily the people that we were raised with or the people that we work with, um, or even people that we agree with on certain ideas or positions. It, it helps us to just be able to, to make friends and, and, and be kind for one another and be understanding. And again, that the intellectual empathy, but really it's just empathy uh, with one another and, and also feeling safe to, to, again, be oneself and explore one's ideas alongside others, feeling like one's going to be judged or anything like that. I mean, yeah, you should brought up, you know, Fortuna. I don't think Fortuna was like upset. I think she was just, she was impassioned. She was fired up. She was excited about the idea. Um, and, you know, she got a full-time job, which is fantastic. Uh, so she couldn't really, she can't really attend anymore. Although she might be coming back in the, um, in the winter semester. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's that kind of thing where it's like, wow. I didn't know that I had this in me, although I, I, I was hoping I did. And, you know, what's more, I didn't know that um, I can make friends like this. And, and I think that's a that's a key. I think that's a key component in, in the way that uh, the students and I kind of see and, and, and Louisa see the, the philosophy club. It's not meant to be intimidating whatsoever. Um, and look, like I said, there are other philosophy clubs around town and We've had our student ambassadors visit those universities and those colleges and attend their philosophy clubs. And it's very much like a class. A professor comes in and gives a lecture and then they just engage the professor on the lecture. They never even engage each other. And I just think that's, you know, we're trying to do something different here. And, um, you know, we, it's always nice to, to get some feedback. Again, it's not like a, a, a class where you can hand in like a, a sheet and say, hey, review the class, you know, the club. We don't really have that. So this is kind of like that trying to get a sense of whether or not what we're striving for here is, is in effect landing. I know they made fun of me for talking too long and being long-winded. I'm going to stop again. Sorry. Yeah, Mansi is like a diva. He likes attention. We just let, let him rant, you know. <laughs> it's okay. Let him have so this five minutes of a spotlight. It's okay. Um, well, yeah, sure. Uh, my, Marcus, you're next. And then we'll need to like start wrapping up to have like the, the vote so we don't forget this time. But yeah. And you're muted, Marcus. 
You're okay. muted, buddy. Still muted. He looks more like a like. <laughs> Don't like read for it. Piano riffs. Just just unmute uh, yourself. It's it's right there. Someone go ahead. I, I cannot unmute you. It's sorry. right there on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, we can, you need no, no. You're muted. You have to unmute yourself. Like, yes, you can. I mean, okay. We believe. We believe in you, man. Come on. We're really? here for moral support. Let's go. Yes, let's go. Can let's do go. It. He's he. You have a beer or, or again, so you should be like. <laughs> should we tell him we're messing with? No, <laughs> sure. Oh, he's let's, muted. I mean, we can't hear he's, anything. He's just... legit muted, so at least none of you can do anything about it. Okay, um, so yes, he's gonna come back. back. He probably we'll dropped back. a call and come back. We we'll probably just we could just like prank him and like we end the meeting and there's nothing more to say. Surprise! <laughs> Surprise! No meeting. <laughs> there's nothing to go back to. Um... <laughs> okay, let's let's think of topics to in the in the meantime until he he joins back. Sure, we can we can talk on talking and we can talk on topics. Look at me, talk a talky talky talky. Um, we can talk on topics. <laughs> Oh, we can do. Uh, we haven't done one in a while on communication. On communication? Mm -hmm. What do you on mean? The... Like, what is proper communication? I mean, I, I think it needs to be more specific since communication is very broad. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go into it. I mean, if you, if you let me, unless you want to take the lead. Of course, <laughs> no, 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 not at all. I'm just trying to know if like if you have something more specific. If not, then we brainstorm. I was I was thinking we could do something related to communication, like. Um, you know how in, in COVID, sure, we are face to face, we have um, cameras and whatnot, but when you are in person, you're picking up on nonverbal cues, you're picking up on the body language, you're picking up on the tone of the person and the pitch of their voice. So that kind of stuff to um, and we can we can say we can I mean, not say, but we can uh, assess that yes this is also communication we are communicating because my message is being delivered and being understood by you guys but not necessarily the entirety of the message yeah like so, the limitations of covid communication welcome back marcus are you still muted Can no i am back i think you're still muted we I can't hear you hey no i know you can okay um <laughs> No, but what I was going to say, um, kind of going off of what Manzi was saying before um, my phone fucked up, but um, uh, you talked about empathy, and it teaches us empathy, you know, relation to other human beings, etc. And I wanted to to just really go down that because I think it's so. I think I think that's the whole purpose behind philosophy, is to teach you that every other thing and every other person you see. Is exactly like you like we I feel like we forget that other people are human too like they have a life that's exactly like ours that is torn between choices you know decisions bad decisions good things bad things etc etc tough choices all, all these things and I feel like that's the the purpose um, to teach us that you don't need to oh there's no need to uh, ag aggressively like demonize your fellow man because they're they're they've made the same mistakes as, as you. They've woken up on the wrong side of the bed before, you know. They've spilled coffee on their lap, etc. They've had a little car crash, blah blah blah. Um, I think it it highlights something. Uh, more, not only that, but even more so that I'll tell you this little bit of a uh, quote that I kind of came up with the other day. Kind of reminds you of this. That um, you know, every man, every grown man is is uh is simply is nothing more rather than a, a grown boy. Okay, every man is nothing but a grown boy. Okay, you can, woman, it doesn't matter. Okay, there. But the idea behind that then is that every decision that a man has made or a woman, okay, it doesn't matter, was made from uh, something that used to be a child. Okay, and that child had hopes, it had dreams. It was scared of things. It was scared of the dark. Donald Trump used to be scared of the dark. I bet you half the other people, you know, that you hate in the world used to, too. But that's what I mean. They used to look up to their mom. They used to go crying. 
They used to wear diapers, all of us, okay? That is the most humanizing thing to understand then about your he fellow humans is that you all came from nothing but a little, little, little thing that grew into a bean, that grew into a potato, that grew into a cantaloupe or bigger, I don't know, pick a bigger vegetable, I don't fucking know. But, and I think that's so, I think it really teaches you then the, 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 uh, what's the, the weight then, I'm sorry, that the decisions that a man makes carries then. Because say a man decides to go to war, okay, that is a child, a used to be child deciding to go to war for the potential to kill someone. Children used to play with sticks and stones, okay, they used to fight with sticks, okay, sticks and fists, okay, but men, they fight with like bombs and bullets, okay, that's the difference between men and boys, but all those men who are dropping bombs and ordering you know, the execution and bomb droppings on anyone else. They used to be a child playing with Legos or a stick in a yard somewhere, having no idea that they would once be in a position to take another life like that with just the snap of their finger, you know, the ordering of an order. I think that's something a lot of us, we, we forget that, like, you grow up in the decision makings and decisions, they become normal to you. You know, the weight that they carry, they're just in every day because you're, you become so exposed to it, overexposed almost. But we forget how underexposed we were as a child and how much everything meant to us because of that then. You know, because we were so underexposed, everything held such weight to us. And we then understood that everything mattered. And if everything mattered, why are there bad people in the world? Everyone should be good. I'm a good kid. I like people. Why is everyone, why is the world bad? That's a thought that you have as a child. You go, why is the world so shitty? But then you grow up and you understand that humans change. Um, but you need to remember that you change to make sure that you don't change into something that you don't want to be. And I think that's something that philosophy reminds you of because then you can look at the news and, and see, oh, world leader, you know, um, develops first nuclear bomb, blah, 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 blah. It's like that guy used to be a kid. That kid just developed a nuclear bomb, a weapon of mass destruction. He never once had that thought as he was a child. He never once thought, I want to make a big weapon that kills things and destroys everything. I want to do this thing that completely and not. And now there are circumstances that children start having those thoughts as young, but that's where the cycle of dismay happens. You got to break it somewhere. Okay. And understand people grow up as victims. Okay. And then they can become perpetrators themselves. Um, that's another aspect of humanity, but I just – I think that's something we forget, and I think that's so powerful to remind yourself of. Is that every person you see on the street, every person you see on TV, every celebrity you see being worshipped on social media, you used to have shit in their pants, okay? They used to have shit in their pants. They used to. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, completely. Yeah, I, it probably is still happening here and there. You know, when they, they think there is like a, a nightlight in their room. Yeah, when they, they think there is a gas and there's something else. Yes. <laughs> started making war. Started making. Pick another explicit item. Like it doesn't matter. But that's the thing. You grow up and you understand that more can be done. So you want to do more. Doesn't necessarily mean that's a good thing to do. But you realize, oh, I get to do more. Oh, it's stupid. We forget. Everyone forgets that you used to be a child with nothing other than happiness in your heart or love wanting to be had. Like, it's like, what the, what happened? Was it the teenage years? Was it being the teen? Was it, it was being 13 years old, wasn't it? It was the preteens. That's what killed it. Yeah. But it's more on that, though, as, as the, here's what scares me, though. Okay. The more society becomes connected overly um stimulated through technology okay the more children who are supposed to be innocent and not have any knowledge of anything bad about the world become more exposed to the ideas of the wickedness of the world children now are having like ideas and access to things that should not be accessible at that age okay so that's going to be that's a large variable like that is now changing as the eight, like that age group is, is now part of a very, like they have this variable within them that like younger generations didn't have as far as like growing up with that stimulus. Okay. With that exposure, they're now that experiment. 
We're now experimenting with human beings, guys. Every new generation is literally an experiment. I hope you know that because each generation has a new experience of living. No two generations have the same exact human experience. That's what makes us hate, you know, boomers and boomers hate Gen, Gen X type shit. OK, but it's like that. So what if we reach a point then that we make the human experience so volatile, so exposed to wickedness or the possibility of it being exposed to that or doing it that we destroy ourselves? What if there was a mean between that point where we could have good life, but we overexposed ourselves and um, and the idea of progressiveness, et cetera, whatever the whatever, you know, progression. Oh, stock price. Oh, I can calculate the entirety of the moon landing on my phone now. OK, cool. That used to be a whole room. You want to know something? A quantum computer just did, I think it was 2.2 billion years worth of calculations in 10 minutes, I think it was. I read an article the other day. That's the same scaling up as we saw 20 years ago or 30 years ago, OK? Except it's going to be in even more volatile now because it's more aggressive. Each time we advance, we become more aggressive. You know, the first man to make fire, that's an advancement, more aggressive, OK? More prepared. Yes, I'm gonna uh, but what, one, one thing, one thing, Marcus. <laughs> Marcus. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's wonderful. I, I, I just want to say something very quick. I know, I know it's fine. I mean, the thing is that we still have to vote on Mansi's next, but it, it is, it is funny. I, I, I remember something very quick before I go to Mansi. I remember that the first, uh, the first couple of times that I saw Marcus in the philosophy club, I remember that he and I went like debated very heatedly <laughs> because normally if there is a chance to say that an animal is less than a human he will take it like we're talking like I don't know anything unrelated like we're talking about tables it's like because animals are less than human and like oh my god <laughs> so it, it is just funny that then hey after that we start like really communicating and now it's just it's just fun to listen it's just, it, it, it just like, it is fine to have you here. <laughs> um, okay, so go ahead, Mansi. Yeah, and um, I mean, if you couldn't tell, Marcus is a former student of mine <laughs> in both uh, approach and passion. Yeah, you know, uh, and I'll say this. I mean, you know, Marcus is an alumni. I think he has more experience here than anybody else with the philosophy club. He's kind of seen it go through all these different changes. Um, and yeah, it's, uh, again, this kind of passion is always appreciated. And I also like the fact that, you know, the passion is not to be mistaken for aggression. Marcus is a very sweet guy. He's not trying to be, you know, angry. He's just, he gets excited. And, you know, that we have, we have room for that for sure. Uh, but yeah, what I want to do here is this, because we've already crossed the 430 threshold. Um, I kind of want to respond a little bit to what Marcus is saying and maybe try to translate his points into possible topics for next week. So, Marcus, it sounds like what you were really driving at here, and you use the term yourself, is this idea of innocence or a loss of innocence. And so, I mean, it, it's certainly, it's a topic that I'm very fascinated by. I, I've, I've taught a class called Loss of Innocence um, here at, at, uh, at Dallas College, formerly Richland. So I, um, yeah, I, I really enjoy the, that thing. And uh, yeah, especially this idea of, of forgetting. Um, not necessarily forgetting, you know, sort of your biological origin, but sort of forgetting maybe the initial perspectives you had on things. And, you know, it sounds like Marcus was lamenting the fact that, you know, that innocence goes away even more quickly now because of technology and because of how pervasive it is and how easily accessible things are that, you know, might be the kind of content that is a little bit sensitive for, for people at a young, impressionable age. Um, so yes, maybe something like loss of innocence could be a possible uh, topic for a conversation. Um, I also like the uh, again the topic of uh, that Jennifer and, and, and Yusha kind of came up with this idea of uh, again um, the limits of communication or COVID communication. Um, and, and you know, just to, to once again uh, plug the philosophy club, you know, the philosophy club is a place where you can meet in real time, you know, synchronously and, and see people's faces if they choose to reveal them. And if not, again, no big deal. You hear people's voices at the very least. And that's, um, you know, that's that's something that, you know, gets offered here that maybe doesn't necessarily get offered in your online classes for the time being. Uh, and, and what's more, because we record these conversations, it's not like you have to be here to hear them. You can go back and listen to them. All you have to do is become a member of the team space. Um, but a, a topic I wanted to throw out there, so like a third topic now, 
So we have communication, we have loss of innocence. Um, we haven't really talked about uh, the sacred in a while. So this notion of what is sacred, is anything still sacred? Kind of relates to Marcus's topic. And, you know, sacred in the sense of, you know, could be sort of a divine notion. It could be sacred in the sense of things that are true to you, your own personal convictions that you don't want to waver from. You know, this is what's sacred to me. Could be maybe relationships, family. What is the sacred? And, and, and how does something become sacred? And, and how does something lose its sort of sacred uh, appeal, sacred characteristic? Uh, yeah, maybe something along those lines. So, I mean, that's three out there. Um, and again, we're meeting next week. So does anybody, uh, yeah, let's, let's take topics now. I have written them down already, the three. You just seem oh. to be wanting to say something, but I already oh, wrote I down the three options. I forgot. You guys can go ahead. I'll, I'll chime in if I remember that. Uh, I think Luisa had mentioned a, a topic, uh, Professor Benton. Um, I don't know if uh, you guys are at that or not, but I think it's really uh. interesting. Which topic again? Um, uh, she said th- another point about discussing philosophy related to what Jeff said about this, the club. Oh, oh. I think she was addressing uh, something that Nancy said. She was like doing the Orlando thing, but on text. Mm, on what? Okay. Um, mm-hmm. she, she was just expanding on Nancy's ideas, I believe. Oh yeah, um, no, I remember the the loss of innocence. I'm sorry, uh, the 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 loss of innocence, and I, I, I that that topic has my vote hands down, uh, because uh, not not too long ago there was a video circulating social media where, I mean, it, it wasn't circulating; it was being circulated by others. Unfortunately, where a a guy shot himself on a live stream. And people oh. were sending it to each other like a joke. I mean, not even adults uh, were doing that. It was these kids, 12, 13, 14, 15 year old kids. And it's not something to joke about. I mean, a person did something horrible instead of instead of making it into a joke or, or a prank, you should be you should be self-realizing that what drove him to do that? Did we do something to push him to that limit? And that that's why I think, Marcus, your topic is is by far the, the best one that, that we've heard so far in, in the history of, of um, the club. <laughs> in the history of the club. I'll take the credit. I'll take it. Yeah, it was mine. Yeah, it was take, mine. Take Definitely. It. And it, it's, it's good that Orlando is not here because otherwise he will, he will appropriate it. It would take a, a copyrights of your idea, uh, but yes, the way it works is like if you can see the chat, um, we have n- numbered the the possible topics for next Topic week. Next you just year. have to t- a type either one, two, or three, and the one who gets the most votes is the one who is going to be talk next week. Next week, yes, that's right. On winter, you have not listened wrong. We are at it. So, next, next quick, not next week. Next quick. We're going to yes. talk about it next week. Next week. Yeah. So we have right now three votes. We have here around 12 people. Well, so, yes, um, those who are here, feel free, please, to to vote because uh, that's not majority. Go ahead and uh, that was a great meeting. Thanks, Marcus. Thanks for listening, guys. Oh, your your mic is muted. Oh, no, it's not. Shut up. No. <laughs> Man, don't do that. You fall for it very hard this time. <laughs> oh. I'm sorry. It's just you and Orlando are the easiest. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Hey, thanks for joining right. me. We appreciate All right. Well, I'm going to head out now. All right. Y'all uh, vote. Vote if you can, guys. And uh, I'll see you guys next week. All right. I hope you're feeling better, Marcus. Take oh, yeah. Care. Dude, yeah. I just had a quarantine um because my girlfriend was exposed on Thanksgiving, but uh, we tested negative. Uh, we got our results back, so I'm all I'm all good. I'm all Gucci. No, you can go and try to get it uh, again. Try to get it. You fail. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go back out to the bars and you restaurants. You fail on You have to go. You have to really the quarantine try. was really fun. A whole week of not doing anything except standing doors. Almost wanted to kill myself, but I said no. Nah. I just uh, did a lot of uh, no. I drank a lot of water. Is what I did. Yeah, I drank a lot of water. That's what okay. I. Okay. So and I'm a lot of time to self water, just water, water and juice. Just water. And yes, that's and the only substance I put into my body besides food. <laughs> and to find out who Marcus is.
what Marcus means, oh, what Marcus no, stands Rabbi for. Oh no, Rabbi's going away from a few weeks. I was so, so sad. Ooh. Okay, so until next year. Oh, you broke my heart. Uh, well, yeah, Rivera, uh, we, we, we hope you enjoy your trip. Yeah. And uh, we, I mean, as always, yeah. our meetings are recorded, so you can always come back and and see what new pranks we're pulling on Orlando, Marcus, or Professor Manzi, or anyone for that matter. So okay. yeah, they're, they're recorded, they're up on our stream, and soon uh, we are thinking of putting everything on, on YouTube just to have easier access to it. But yeah, we're, we're looking forward to a lot of new changes. Yeah. We wish you all the best. Ravido, just before we leave, um, I, I, we are not going to stop doing our meetings. She's left. No, she's there. <laughs> um, <laughs> so um, I don't think there is something wrong with doing it on the 5th. So probably the, the, the first meeting of the year will be the January 5th. Just so you know. Okay, got um, it. Because yeah, because we're going to continue doing every Tuesday. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, that's it. So, it seems like it's going to be number two, Loss of Innocence. So, it is it is decided. Magic stuff. of three, of course. Mm -hmm. Of course it did. Of course it did. Come on, Professor Magic. Tradition. <laughs> Wait, Marcus had a perfect streak going, and you just chimed in with that ugly three. Like, look how fat it is. It's okay. But well, thank you so much for joining in. It was a blessing. A very interesting week today. Uh, low key, and then you know, uh, it was very refreshing. Um, so yeah, and now we're gonna go back to more heavy material stuff, so we don't lose track of the reality, the darkness of the of life out there. You know, <laughs> uh, or not, or maybe not. Maybe even not even then, dark. we're. Even then, we're all still gonna be laughing through it. Like between between you, me, and Orlando, I'm I'm pretty sure someone's gonna throw like a bad joke, and we're that's, gonna be like, "That's happening." Dang it. Uh, remember, even if we don't, uh, thanks, Professor Benton. You have a good one. Uh, even if we don't, remember what happened that last time in the meeting, where we were closing, and I was thanking everyone for for coming. I don't. I, I mean, there are many meetings. You have to be more specific. Okay, I'll uh, I'll see if I can find it. I'll send you the link to that. Okay. All right. Well, well, feel free to leave those who are still here. And if you are not here, then I just gonna wait, and then I just remove you from the meeting if you are like just like not there. But that's that's fine too. I can do that. Too. I, I gotta I gotta hop off as well, y'all. But again, great great last meeting. This was a lot of fun with the PH. <laughs> no pun intended. Take care. No pun Without intended. A pH. Take care. <laughs> Take care, guys. I'll see y'all next time. Yep. Until next time. Ooh. Okay, who's gonna leave first? It's a match now. Uh, can you stop the recording, actually? Uh, yes, yeah, sure. I can stop Thanks. recording. Uh, I stop recording.